Obsidian Nightmares. The skull head of the obsidian statue stared into Quintum through black eye sockets. Its twin voids transfixed his gaze as the symbols on its crystalline surface swirled on the periphery of his vision. A halo of black electricity was its crown. Quintum, the statue whispered. Something grabbed his shoulder. Quintum! The statue's scream vibrated his body. Flashes of red light distorted his vision. He's dying! A voice called out. Brace the door! Another voice shouted. Return to me! The statue yelled. Get up! Get up! We've been born to damn it! Jiro shouted as he shook Quintum awake. Jiro's wrinkled face glowed red in the flashing light. Sirens blared over a cacophony of shouts. Quintum's wild eyes darted about in a panic. Crewmen rushed down the aisleway and positioned their bunks to block the nearest door. He looked down and saw Captain Vec. His entrails strewn about the deck, his bile pooling on the floor. Jero, the first mate, held the captain's head in his arms. For a moment, Quintum wished he was still dreaming. You'll be all right, Jero said as he looked at his friend's broken body. Who did this? Who's boarded us? Jero asked, blinking back tears. Wreck. The captain rasped before choking on his own blood. Quintum's socks turned crimson as he stepped closer and craned his neck to hear his dying captain's words. Jero's sweat-laden face turned pale. Vec began to convulse and wheeze in his arms. His mouth fell open as his eyes filled with terror. Emperor, help us! Jero muttered under his breath. What? Jero, what did he say? Quintum asked. No, nothing I, I, I don't know. The, the, the armory. We have to get to the armory. Jero leapt up and sprinted to the exit on the far side of the room. Quintum gave chase as the other men abandoned the barricade and joined them in their flight. He was catching up to Jero when the ship jolted, throwing them all to the deck. The lights and sirens cut out, and total darkness fell over them. A screech of tearing metal echoed through the crew quarters. Red emergency lights flickered to life. Jero bolted upright and glanced behind him before sprinting in the opposite direction. In their fear, the other men scrambled to keep pace and jumped over Quintum as they ran. Quintum's head throbbed as he pulled it off the floor and propped himself up on his elbows. Quintum... A voice whispered from just beyond the twisted metal door. A large, humanoid shadow danced in the flickering red lights. A pair of four-fingered hands grasped the doorway at the end of the hall. Quintum stood, his eyes transfixed by the shadow that lurked just behind the door. Come here, Quintum. It whispered. He staggered forward, head swirling. He moved, but his actions didn't feel like his own. You want... me? What... what are you? Quintum thought. Come and see... Be not afraid... It said, in a trance-like motion, he outstretched his arm but was forced back into the adjacent corridor. Jiro shoved him down the hall as the creature's guttural clicking echoed through the ship. The creature called to Quintum. Come to Its voice fading as he stumbled down the hall. Quintum was ripped out of his trance. He staggered forward, grabbing the wall to keep his footing. His headache intensified. His spots clouded his vision. Jiro dragged him by the arm. For throne's sake, you idiot! He hissed through gritted teeth. Jiro quickened his pace when he heard clacking on the metal decking. Quintum outstretched his arms towards the noise of the metallic footsteps. Jiro yanked him down the corridor to the armory and threw Quintum inside before sliding the door shut with a heavy thud. 
Quintum was hauled off the deck by the augmentic arm of a hulking crewman named Loro. He tugged him upright and shoved a dented last pistol into his hand. Quintum stared at the weapon as his vision began to return. By the Emperor. What's, what's happening? What is that thing? Why did it call to me? He thought to himself. That won't help you. Open the door. Come to me. The voice called out to him. Quintum spun around in a panic, <gasps> unsure where the voice was coming from. No one else seemed to notice it. A loud bang rocked the door, causing the men to jump in unison. Open the door. The voice screamed out. A faint urge to open the door struck him. He considered stepping toward it when Loro leveled a mining laser at it. Two other crewmen covered his flanks as Jiro readied his rifle to cover them. Quintum stood still, knowing they wouldn't let him get close to it. Screeching seemed to erupt all around them as the banging intensified. Quintum jolted and fumbled with his last pistol before managing a twitching, dead fish grip on the handle. Quintum noticed a pattern in the cacophony of noise. It was difficult to discern at first. But then, the screeches grew louder and more painful, until the message was all but forced into his skull through pounding ears. The statue... Show me... It said. There was a screech of metal being rent. The men's eyes darted around the room, looking for its source. Loro looked up, but it was already too late. An axe smashed through his skull, cleaving his head in two. A large, dark shape followed the axe through the ceiling's rusted maw. It used all four of its arms to free the behemoth blade from Loro's sternum. Its obsidian armor glinted in the bloody light. Quintum stared at the bolt of black electricity that crackled from its helmet. The crystal statue flashed into his mind's eye, and the creature turned to meet his gaze. It had no eyes, yet stared deep into his soul. Take me there. It screeched into his brain. Quintum's crewmates opened fire, but the bullets and laser beams burst into violet sparks before making contact with a monstrosity. A bolt of black lightning shot out from its helmet and blew a crewman's head apart. It swung its axe and cleaved through another crewman's neck. Bloody tears rolled down Quintum's cheeks, his face spattered with brains. He stood motionless. A statue with a pounding heart. Shoot it! Jiro yelled at him as the creature charged. Adrenaline unlocked his limbs, but his fear defied Jiro's order. He turned and ran to the cargo hold beneath the makeshift armory. Gwyn! <gasps> Jiro's voice was replaced by a juicy crunch and the sound of tearing meat. Quintum threw himself beneath the rusted land crawler and covered his ears. His shaking last pistol tapped against the metal. The creature's claws clacked on each step as it followed the trail of bloody footprints down into the hold. Where are you, Quintum? It asked. The clacking inched closer until it sounded as though it were right beside him. The land crawler rolled back exposing the shivering fetus of a man. A warm trickle ran down his legs as he forced the barrel of the last pistol into his mouth. The trigger clicked. Again and again as he sobbed and prayed for death. The creature said as it stared at him. A torrent of sparks erupted from its helmet as it probed deep into his brain. Quintum convulsed as he felt it tug on the thoughts of his subconscious. It dredged the vague memory of the statue from the depths of his mind. His brain ached as it revealed the planet once he had unearthed the accursed relic. The creature looked upon the mental images with glee. Damn.